Get ready for a no BS approach to health and fitness. This is NBS Fitness Radio. All right, welcome back to MBS Fitness Radio. I am here with Barry Wickham. Uh, Barry is a member of MBS Fitness, and today we're going to talk about an experience that we both had doing an event called 29029. And so what this is, it is an organized event, so it's put on by an organization and around 250 people gather at a mountain and climb it however many times would equal the height of Everest. So the height of Everest is 29,029 feet. Hence the name of the event is 29029 Everesting. Um, you only ascend the mountain. You ride a gondola back down. And you have 36 hours to complete the necessary ascents that would equal Everest. Now, the number of, of ascents varies based on each mountain. So each mountain has a, a different amount of ascents that you have to do. And uh, when you complete that task, you win a red hat. So both Barry and I completed the task. We earned red hats, um, but that is only scratching the surface of what the event is and how it works yep. and how it impacts you. So today's podcast is going to be, going to be the two of us discussing our 29029 experience. Barry. Yeah. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. You know, it's funny you're talking about... Uh, the hat, um, the event I was at this year, uh, one of the founders was there, and he was talking about it. He's like, you know, you go through all this. You you train for this. You prepare. You come out here. You pour it all out. And what do you get? You get a hat. Yeah. <laughs> you, you get a trucker hat. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's not even really an expensive hat, yeah. but it's a hat you can't buy anywhere else. Yeah. The free hat, or not the free hat, but the hat you're given. Yeah. Is a is a nicer hat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this this hat is actually a nicer made hat yeah. than the one that we won. But the one that the one that I got for completing it, I'll probably never wear. Yeah, that's it's, what I like. It's uh, sitting on it. It's actually sitting on top of my closet right now. I'm gonna figure out what to do with. Yeah, it. Yeah, how to it's, frame it. Yeah, I um, yeah, I won't I won't wear it because it's 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 like I, it's too risky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, don't, I want nothing to happen to that hat. Um. So, how did you? hear about 29029 like how did it come into your life so back in around 2019 i was at a business conference in washington dc and i had a motivational speaker a guy i'd never heard of um named jesse itzler <laughs> uh he was the morning speaker one day and went in and this guy honest to god david he's the best motivational speaker i've ever heard like wow. when it, I, He's the only guy I ever kept the notes to the speech. Yeah. I've still got him on my phone, and every once in a while I'll reference back to him just because he had such an interesting take on life. And, you know, he's the guy who some people may know the book. There's a book out there called Living with a Seal. And this is the story of him finding this, him coming across this guy that he wanted to just learn what this guy, what made this guy tick. And this guy was a Navy SEAL. And so he invited this guy to move in with him for 30 days and train him. And the deal was Jesse had to do whatever the SEAL said. Yeah. And the SEAL turned out this guy named David Goggins. And yeah. many people heard about it who's a complete, <laughs> just the guy's a machine, right, yeah. you know. Um, but the book is hilarious. But so I heard Jesse speak, and he was talking about the concept of, you know, and we're at a business conference, right? And he talks about this concept of I don't care what your resume looks like. What does your life resume look like? What have you done in your yeah. life that's interesting? And so he talked a lot in his speech about time and how time is undefeated. You know, you only have a certain amount of time to do things. And if you think about things in the concept of, you know, you only have 18 summers with your kids, don't waste one, you know, and things like that. And so anyway, he was really interesting. So I kind of started following, I bought his book, read it, and had it actually has a second book where he went and lived with, uh, lived in a monastery with some monks. Mm. Very interesting experience also. 
but so I started sort of keeping up with him and he create him and two other guys created this event. And so that's sort of how I heard about it. And right about that time is when I really got serious about my fitness. And so I always kind of had in the back of my mind that, that this event was out there. And so I reached a point about probably about a year ago that I finally decided, you know, it was one of those things that I kept saying, I'd love to do that one day. It was always this nebulous, you know, one day that would be really cool to do. Yeah. And about a year ago, I decided one day is it's, it's time for one day to happen. And so I, I knew it sold out quick. And so I followed it and figured out what day it was going to drop. Um, it was, the registration was going to open. Yeah. And so uh, I knew I, I I knew I couldn't be I, I had to be somewhat selective in dates because during the fall, busy going and visiting our kids at college, yep. and so um, I knew I had I, I knew I couldn't just pick any date, so I had to I had to be there when it opened, and, and so that was sort of how I I found out about it and sort of made it had it in the back of my mind as it got closer, got really close. I sat down with Stacy, my wife, and like, hey, I want to do this. You okay with this? Yeah. Here's what's going to cost, and we talked about it, and she said okay. Yeah. And next thing I know, I'm clicking the button to sign up. Hadn't really talked with a lot of people about the fact that I was going to do it. Angie may have been a nutrition coach, uh, may have been the only person that I had mentioned to that I was really, really leaning in to do this. Yeah. And so uh, yeah, just signed up and said I'm going to I'm going to do it. That's awesome. So. Mine was not that case. <laughs> yeah. Well, just interesting. So I'll lead into that. Okay. When I signed up, I mean, the events sold out in minutes. Yeah. Okay. Like I signed up and two of the mountains, by the time I even clicked on it, were sold out. Yeah. yeah. Which thankfully weren't the two I want. I had, I had two dates that I could do. And so the date I wanted to do it was still available within the third minute of it yeah. opening. So I was able to get the one I wanted. Yeah. And it sold out so fast that, which, which it commonly has, about a, two days later, they announced, hey, because of demand, we're going to open up another weekend. Yeah. Well, and so I think it's important for people to know that the reason it sell, one of the reasons it sells out so fast is because the alumni who've already gone get you get to sign up beforehand. Right. You get yeah, like you first got, dibs. Uh, yeah. So like Whistler was 50%. No, no, sorry. Not Whistler. Um, one of them was 50% sold out. Yeah. Or sorry, 50% alumni. Yeah. So anyways, um, so I had known of Jesse Itzler. I read the the Living with a Seal book. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I didn't follow him on Instagram and I didn't, I wasn't aware of the 29029 mm -hmm. event, but my buddy, Chris, um, who also trains here at MBS, he was aware of it and he had mentioned it to me at one point in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I think he saw where they reopened the second, um, snow basin. Yep. <clears throat> and he was like, Hey, you want to do this? I said, I'm down. Let me just clear it with the wives. He said, cool, you're good to go. I was like, all right, sign me up. Yeah. But, I didn't have it on my radar. Like, I knew about it. Yeah. I knew what 29, I knew the concept of just walking up the mountain. And I just saw it, honestly, from the lens of, of a of a cool uh, a cool physical challenge, something fun to go do mm -hmm. with my bud. You know, that was it. But I didn't follow them on social media. And I, I, I didn't have a reference point for, like, what the event was as, in its entirety. And so I think this would be a good segue into like our approaches to it. Yeah. Um, I'll tell mine and you can share yours. Yeah. So um, leading up to the event, I was in a very busy time for business and um, honestly had, I kind of like stopped training for about a month because all day, every day I was setting up Ninja Gym equipment. Mm -hmm. So that was essentially my training. Right, every right. Day. I was going to say that that's not easy. Um. And so I didn't really have a lot of space for, for much else. I was yeah. literally opening up a new um, physical location and also opening up a, a, a new actual like business yeah. brand gym. So that's kind of where all my focus was. Mm -hmm. And a part of the thing, um, part of the uniqueness and the, there's a super high value behind 29029 is they 
provide you everything you could possibly need to have success on this mountain. This is including uh, training plans that get sent to you on a regular basis, uh, access to coaches who are very knowledgeable, and um, they'll do calls with coaches where you can call in and you can ask any questions to provide this giant community of support that you can reach out to. So it's not just an event that you sign up for. It is an experience that that begins six months in advance. It is absolutely a community that you join. Yes. You join a community of other um, people and coaches who are invested in your success in this. And and it's such a varied background to just, you know, different people that there is, there's some commonality amongst the people, but wide backgrounds, wide geographical backgrounds. You got people from other countries coming to do it. You got people from all 50 states. So this isn't just something that people in Colorado and Utah and, you know, the mountains of California and Montana can go do. This is designed so that anybody can come do it. The the key to success is showing up ready. Yeah, 100%. The, um, yeah, in the event, you will see people of every size, shape, background. You'll age. Age. So, you know, it is not this event where there's a bunch of <clears throat> fitness freak 20-year-olds who are there just to crush it. I mean, you're going to see people, you're going to see elderly people, you're going to see people that this is their first time exercising ever. There was a lady at mine who was from Brooklyn and had never left Brooklyn. This was the first hike she'd ever been on. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, like, you see a wide range yeah. of people. Yeah. Um, like, Welcome to Utah. Yeah. Walk up that hill. <laughs> yeah. I was like, hey, like, just so you know, like, this is not the, a good barometer for what hiking is yeah, like. This, they're not all like this. Yeah. It doesn't have to be this hard. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, my, ba- uh, my leading up to it was <laughs> I was – Busy doing other stuff, and I have a yeah. uh, you know for those who don't know, but I, I'm 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 a, I'm a fit individual who's yeah. been doing this for a long time, so I have yeah. a good base. But I never opened the training plan, and I never gauged in the community. So yeah. you know when we kind of share my experience, I'm, I'm coming from a little bit different point from Barry, where like I was unaware of of how much community involvement there was, uh, and really did. Uh, really did not know kind of like what I was getting myself into in its totality. Yeah. So yeah. now Barry, you had a, so, you had a different experience, right? <laughs> so I, I went into this curious about it and really did immerse myself into the community, if you will, because I wanted to learn as much as I could. I given my, where my fitness level was and is compared to yours, you know, I, I've, you know, for my age, I'm, you know, com- compared to the average dude on the street, yeah, I'm pretty good. But I knew that this was a huge challenge for me yeah. physically. So I knew I was going to need to soak up everything I could to understand what I was going to get myself into and how to train for this. I had no idea how to train for this, but part of the deal was, hey, we will give you a 20-week training program. Yeah. Cool. Couldn't get my hands on it fast enough. <laughs> was ready to start. Um, and so, yeah, part of the great thing for someone like me was, um, and for a lot of people, you know, they have this, it's on this uh, network called the Mighty Networks. It's this platform. They've got message boards. And um, and so you can go in there and kind of log on and start hearing people. And there's different board. Hey, beer board, if you have questions about training, if you have questions about equipment, if you have questions about nutrition, if you have questions just in general. And so you can engage online with, and just read the questions and see and learn a lot. You know, there's there's a million questions about which shoes to wear. <laughs> there's a million questions about nutrition. Um, you know, which hiking pole should I buy? Do I need a thick rain jacket or a thin rain jacket? So you could learn whatever you want. But through that, for me, what was what was really interesting, and this sort of gets to the community, there were a couple of people who just threw them, you know, you can private message this, this. I just got a couple of messages from people saying, hey man. Welcome to the community. Yeah. And one of them was a guy from Nashville. And um, he's like, you got any questions, reach out. 
you know, I'm, I'm from Nashville. I've done this a couple of times. I'm doing every event this year, which is interesting. He, he literally, he's, he's doing this event six times this year. Yeah. Uh, he's an incredible guy, uh, obviously incredibly physically fit, but and his why is interesting. We'll talk about him uh, along the way. His name's Patrick, and he was a he was a huge. Help I did not to know me. he's from Nashville. He's from Nashville. Okay, yeah, cool. he, and his, he and his family live in Nashville. Um, college baseball player, um, great guy. So anyway, we um, I, I connected with him and a couple others, and and sort of got immersed in into the community. And then yeah, every two weeks there is a Zoom call with Brent Peace, who is the head coach, and he normally had one of the other coaches on with him. And so you could engage, you could listen to them just answering questions. And they were very accommodating, and they answered the same question 14 times every week, and it, which, to their credit, because every time yeah. it's somebody new who yeah. hasn't been on to hear that question yet, right? So it could get a little repetitive if you're listening to all of them. But, but if you stop for a minute and go, well, there's a reason. You know, it's because that person's that first time here, they're getting ready for their mountain. And yeah. So, yeah, so for me, it was a because I knew going into this, I had to prepare. I had to over prepare. Um, I needed to I needed to hit every angle I could to make sure I didn't trust just my fitness enough to go in and just do this. Yeah. And I think that played to my favor in that it immersed me. And what I quickly learned was this was not just about fitness. Yeah. This was about nutrition. This was about rest. This was about all the things that go into total fitness, really. You know, you had to learn how to manage through injuries. You had to learn how to manage through, you know, nutrition challenges, hydration, what to do with electrolytes. And so my prep really started with, Again, soaking in every bit of advice I could get from them and took the training plan and you know it went week by week. They would send it out every two weeks, they would send you yeah, they, they would they, they wouldn't send you the whole thing in advance. They right. just send it out in two week chunks. And so you could look out and go, okay, what's my next two weeks look like? And it just slowly built. And even then, the training plan is set up so wonderfully that there's four levels to it. And it's really you could pick a level based on your fitness. And yeah. they and they kind of guide you which level to choose. But what they tell you is even if you're doing level one, you can finish this mountain. You don't have to complete level four of this yeah. training plan to complete the challenge. Yeah. You just need to train. And and what I learned in going through this, even though it's an incredibly well thought out training plan, but it's a training plan for 3,000 people. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, however many people are doing this event. So, you know, 1,500 people. So it's very generalized. And so... But the thing that Brent would always get back to his training is it's about time on your feet. Yeah. It's about time on your feet. And so where the training the first week was, hey, go jog for 30 minutes and then uh, get on an exercise bike for 30 minutes and then, you know, do some strength training. And they had it set up where you didn't have to have a gym membership. I mean, everything, all the strength training was really body weight type yeah. stuff. Um, it was jogging, walking, hiking. Yeah. Um, you know, swimming, if that was your, and, and so they, they, they explained it in a way that, listen, there's a lot of very, there's a lot of variation how you apply this, but it was, it was well set out. So I took the training plan, man, I, I had my training plan. I had my every podcast every two weeks. Yeah. I found that. And then again, through the community, what I also found is they had podcasts. Yeah. And so when I would be on these long training uh, days, I was listening to the 29029 podcast yeah. and that was giving me a lot of perspective and it was helping me prepare for what this was going to be. Right. Because the podcast was a lot of former participants yeah. talking about their experience. And what you would get through that is, you know, it's not about finishing. Yeah. Even in this event, this event isn't about the red hat is the prize at the end of the tunnel up here. Um, but that's really what we talked about. This is not what it's about. This is about people pushing themselves yeah. well beyond what they thought they were capable of. Yeah. And that really came out in the podcast. Even people who said, I didn't finish. Yeah. They had no remorse about it. That just, hey, I didn't. But here's what I got out of it. There was one lady on the podcast who she's tried three times and she hasn't finished it. Every time she's gone up there, something has happened and she's gotten sick, nauseous, whatever. Can't finish it, but she keeps going back because she loves it. Yeah. She loves the challenge. She loves the community. She loves pushing herself and trying and being out there. So yeah, I think the the 
the takeaway, one of the takeaways from being in the community and, and going through all that is you learn that, you know, this is not a race. There's no winner. Right. Um, There's no extra red hat for the guy who finishes first. Right. <laughs> no, the, the person who finishes first and last get the same thing. Um, it is about pushing yourself to your limits so you can learn and grow from being um, from that experience. Yeah. So for uh, the red hat, uh, the, 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 the 29 to 9, how many cents that is, is really just kind of like, okay, now you can stop. You know, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it just gives you a finish line to yeah. work towards. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, the goal is not to finish. The goal is yeah. to give it your, your best. The goal, yeah, the goal is to find you. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's to find who you are. And uh, just an interesting story. So one of the things early on when, in the, when I started my training and I was listening to the podcast, the coaches would, one of the coaches, and I forget which one came on, and he encouraged everybody to think about why are you doing this? Yeah. And what he said is the training is going to get long. And he's right. The training got, if you follow the training plan, the training plan got long. Yeah. Like you were doing multiple um, four hour days and you did a couple of 10 hour days. I did a couple of days of 10 hour training, you know, and it's, and it's six and seven days a week. So there's maybe, maybe one day a week off, maybe one day a week off every other week. Now there's yeah. some deload weeks in there where it, where it lightens up to, to rest your body. But when you get in the middle of this thing, it's tough. Even, you know, it's just, it's two hours today. Then it's two hours tomorrow. Then it's two hours the next day, yeah. you know, and this is a lot of time by yourself yeah. in your own head. Yeah. And so one of the things that they encouraged people to do is really Really think about your why. Yeah. Why are you doing this? And so I spend some time early on thinking about that, you know, and uh, sort of writing down, taking some notes, which is something I don't do a lot of, but it sort of forced me to go, you know, I need to think about this and think about defining my why for this event because this is a big deal. And um, that really came into play later on in the training because where I needed that was when I was out there on these, you know, two hour runs or the four hour training days and the 10 hour training days, 10 hours of training by yourself is a long day. Yep. And you better know why you're doing it. Yeah. And that's, that's what I found is after the first of those training days and talking with Angie and she really, she was great from a lot of angles and helping me through this. Um, Primarily came at it from a nutrition perspective and helped me plan that out, but also sort of just helping me frame my mentality because we were we were debriefing after one of my long training days. And and I told her, I was like, man, that said, you know, about hour six, you know, this stuff got real. Yeah. I mean, I was I was kind of going into a dark place and I was, you know, and, and I we could I could tell my energy level was up. And so we we did a lot of looking at what did I eat during that day and and you know, I sort of logged what I eat and we're looking at these things and and I told her I was like, you know, that was just a long day. And she goes, Well, why are you you know, you just gotta remember why you're doing this. And, I, and, it, and then it hit him, he's like, Yeah, you know, that's that's true. You know, she said it even just coming from her own perspective, like, you know, just remember why you're doing this and and I said, said, yeah, I said, you know, it's funny. I, I sat down and I wrote all that down one time. I was like, I probably need to go back. And she's like, well, what would you write down? And so I pulled it up and I showed her. It's like, you know, I wrote down kind of these, came up with these four points that I came up with that sort of summarized why I wanted to do this. And about a week later, she tells me, I've got something for you. And she took those four points and put them on this wristband for me. And so I finished my training and the event, and to this day I still keep it on my wrist because this is, that was my, every time yeah. it got hard, I could just look down and go, okay, this is why I'm doing that. All right, and so what was your why? So my why, so I can read it, um, I really came up with four things that as I thought about, you know, again, it's funny, I got asked a lot, why would you do this? I got, <laughs> I, I met a guy one time, and this was when I was up there before the event, and uh um, the one I did was in uh, Sun Valley, Idaho. So uh, we were, Stacy and I went up there to spend a few days beforehand. And I was just out taking a little warm up hike and ran into some guys, and they were setting up and uh, saw this guy, a couple of people out on the trail. And I 
got to chat and I said, yeah, I'm here for that. They're like, oh, you're for that event? He goes, yeah. He's like, man, why would you do that? <laughs> and I kind of laughed it off. He, he says, he goes, don't most people just for their midlife crisis get a sports car or something? <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, I, I you know I'm a little I'm a little too big for a for a for a Corvette. So. Uh, but you know what I came up with here um, is I thought it through. Is the first thing I, I wrote down was to honor God. You know we are blessed with these wonderful vessels of our body, and we need to treat them fairly, and we need to expand their capabilities and keep them at their peak. So it was really to honor to, to honor Him. Um, the second thing was to be an example. You know. I'm not a, I'm not a fitness professional. I'm just a guy who is going to go do a really, really hard thing. And it's really just to be an example that you don't have to be this just fitness, you know, icon to go do this really hard thing. You can just be just an average dude who can train for this and learn and grow and go do this really hard thing. And then the next one I'd written down was to, to redefine hard. Like what is hard? Okay. This was hard. At one point, when I started this thing, I had never run more than about three miles. Yeah. There was a day midway through the training plan where I ran at, when I went out and ran eight miles. I had never run more than three miles before. Yeah. And then one day, I just went out, almost accidentally ran three miles. There was a day that I ran a 10K twice. (laughs) I ran a 10K. I waited a little while. I ran it again. That's almost half. That's it was over twelve and a half miles, um, and then you know the last thing I I put down was to just uh, to help become the best version of myself that I could be. Yeah. You know I want I want to figure out what the, what's the best version of Barry, and and this doing hard things helps me figure out what's the best version of me. Yeah. So anyway, I, so I, I had this. You know, she it was really great. She put this on a on a wristband for me, and I you know, still wear it every day. Like what? At what point did you did you? come up with those whys it probably took me a couple of weeks i think i bet like what um how far into the training plan early okay um so about the time you know i i started training for it i started kind of preliminarily training for it in in december yeah uh and probably just january february is when i started really sitting and thinking about it and probably a few a few weeks you know off and on thinking about it over that those winter months when i was yeah. just sitting around going what in the world, would, why would I do this? You know, why yeah. would I just plunk down that money and do this? Yeah, that's awesome. Um, what, what did you learn through the training plan? Like, what was kind of your big takeaways, not from the event itself, but from the training? So, um, from a fitness perspective, I learned what zone two cardio yeah. is <laughs> <laughs> uh, because it's all zone two cardio training. It, it's uh, it's on it, but you know what I what I learned is um, I learned the great balance between rest, nutrition, hydration, yeah. and exercise. You can't for for me. I could not get out of whack with any of those. Yeah. And so that training allowed me to learn how to balance those things. I think it's worth telling the story about <laughs> the the hike that didn't go so hot. Oh yeah, the hike that didn't go so hot. Yeah, that was a. <laughs> That was that was a fun one. I was testing out some new supplements, um, and again, this gets down to testing your nutrition, yeah. right? And so I, uh, um, I was out by myself, uh, two or three days after an ice storm, <laughs> out hiking uh, with my ruck vest on and sweatshirts and all this, and um, I just ordered some new supplements. That I that uh, were actually one of the sponsors of the event, and uh, one of the things that in the training they talked about is test your nutrition. Don't try something for the first time when you're on the mountain, and this is why. <laughs> so I uh, I was out there and I had just gotten these new supplements, and um, I took them out there with me and was out hiking and said, okay, you know, I was about I was about halfway into this hike and I said, I'm gonna sit down and try some of this stuff. I, you know, poured some of the, the electrolyte mix into my water, shook it up, and then had like a, a, a chews or things like that, which I've never really used these things before. And so I popped one of those chews in my mouth, chewed it up, started suck, drinking the water, and kept hiking. And again, this is like three or four days after an ice storm, so it's pretty cold out yeah. here, right? And as I'm hiking, you know, I'm, I, I was doing a six-mile ruck that morning. So I had my 
uh, had my weight vest on under my sweatshirt and I was all bundled up with gloves and hat and the whole thing. And so I'm walking and I'm at about mile four, four and a half of a six mile hike. And all of a sudden I just start feeling funny, you know, and I'm, I realize I'm sweating and I'm like, gosh, it's, it's not feeling great. And I realize I'm having an allergic reaction. <laughs> and uh, let's just say I, I, at, at one point I had, I sat down on a log and just, okay, just going to gather myself. And then I opened my eyes and I was laying next to the log. Like, okay, that, that was weird. <laughs> um, and I, I sort of looked down. I was, I was using this all trails app. I think it is. And so I could tell I had about a mile left. I'm like, all right, big fella, you're not going to die. <laughs> you need to get up and you need to put one foot in front of the other and just get back to the car. <laughs> and so I picked up my, I, I, Pulled my weight vest off and just drug it behind me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And because I wasn't going to leave that behind, that's too expensive. And mm. just drug myself out of there, um, just sweating and <laughs> throat swelling. You know, not bad enough that that anything bad was going to happen. But it was like it was the most uncomfortable mile I've ever walked yeah. in my life. I was like, right, I just, I just got to get to the car. I yeah. just got to get to the car. So I got to the car. I was about four, about four or five minutes from home. And I drove home. I walked in the house covered in mud. <laughs> Your face was like bleeding. I had smashed my <laughs> face on something when I fell. So there was blood trickling down my face. I had my yellow sweatshirt was mostly brown from the mud that I fell into uh, when I hit the ground. And I walked in and my wife was sitting on the couch. I'm like, honey, don't turn around. I'm fine. It's <laughs> like, what? It's like, well, you, you, you can turn around now, but I'm fine. She's like, what happened to you? You like, don't look fine. Yeah, I was like, I'm okay. I just need some Benadryl and a nap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and so I took a hot shower. I popped a couple Benadryl, slept it off, and then from there I said, you know what? I'll be bringing my own supplements. <laughs> yep. Love Precision it. hydration was really cool about it. When I told them what happened, they took back what I ordered, yeah. gave me a refund. Yeah. So they were they were a great part of the event. But I just said, you know, that's just one of those things. And so because of that, what I'd started doing once, and they they had said before that they would tell us what food was going to be available at the mountain. So as soon as they released, started releasing the foods that were on the mountain, I just started ordering stuff. Yeah, let me just try this stuff. I just started trying it to make sure. Like, I need to know. I need to go in there and have a plan for what can I eat? And and so when I got up there, I was I was not going to try anything in that 36-hour period that I had never put in my body before. Right. So I knew which things I was uh, – ate a lot of bananas, <laughs> a lot of uh, uh, waffles, um, drank – you know, just drank water. I had my own electrolytes, you know, so yeah, I, I had a plan for that. <laughs> you know, um, like you said, like I le- you learned what zone two was, <laughs> and – what I think is unique is the the uh, what what Zone Two offers you from a learning perspective. <clears throat> so, you know, when I was doing powerlifting, everything's Zone Five. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Zone One, Zone Zone Five. Yeah, and there's there's pain involved. There's there's intensity <clears throat> involved, but but it's over very quickly, right? Mm-hmm. Um. The unique thing about doing like zone two push ins as zone three cardio is that it's uncomfortable yet sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it is in that situation, I think where you really kind of learn who you are, how to deal with stress. Yeah. yeah. It's just shy of miserable. Yeah. Is where I would put it. It's, yeah. it's jogging at a pace that you could have a conversation, but you wouldn't want it to be a meaningful conversation. Yeah. It's, it's man, I can I can probably do this for a really long time, but yeah. it's just gonna suck the whole time. Yeah, it's gonna suck the whole time, but I'm just gonna <clears> keep <throat> going. I'm gonna do it for seventy five minutes. Yeah, that's my goal today. Yeah, and they're just I think that just provides a unique opportunity. Yeah, um, whatever it is about how we're designed, mm-hmm. that is kind of just this space where it, it's it's a unique space where there is a lot of physical health benefits but it's also where like a lot of those emotional mental mental benefits come from as well well you know through this training i spent a lot of time searching for podcasts to listen to um i had a playlist that i listened to about 94 times and so occasionally i would want something else and so i was always looking for podcasts and 
I joked with Colleen Rue at 2929. They weren't putting them out fast enough for me, so I, I, I needed to up the content. But <laughs> that's where I really started listening to Peter Atia, yeah. uh, the longevity doctor. And he, I, I've heard him talk a lot of times about zone two cardio. Yeah. And, and he had an interesting take on a guest one time talking about, said there's, if you're not training in zone two cardio or zone five, you're wasting your time. <laughs> Everything else is just a waste of time. Like zone three and zone four, you might actually compete in those when you're like, he was talking about swimming. It's like yeah. when you swim, you may be in zone zone three or zone four or yeah. when you're biking or something like that. When you're training, your optimal training is zone two, which is just the long, slow grind, yeah. or zone five, which is max effort. Right. <clears throat> like anything else is kind of wasting your time. Yeah. Um. What was what surprised you the most? What did you go? What did you think? What belief did you hold going into the training program that was challenged? It changed after the training program. That's a good question. Um, I it hundred percent challenged my limits mm. because I I never would have thought that I would be able to run as much as I ran. Yeah, because I just didn't think. I was used to when I would hit this three mile barrier yeah. when I was running, my feet would hurt, my sh my you know, get kind of numb, my shin. I'd feel like I was forming shin splints, and I just felt like that was a I w that was a barrier. Yeah, and so I had to learn to push through that. Yeah, and how I had to learn how to push through that, and it's not all at once. Yeah, you don't just say today I'm going to go from three to four. Yeah, it was go from. Th Three and walk for about five minutes and then run a little more yeah to and that's you just kind of had to figure out how to how to attack different things from different angles and again how to balance like I never gave hydration as much credit as I learned in doing this event yeah. um the what I found was the longer I trained the more water I drank the better I felt yeah and so that that was one that I'd never focused on. And again, that that whole balance between sleep, nutrition, hydration, and exercise. Yeah. There's a there's not one of those that is more or less important than the others. Yeah. Um, you, ha I, I did not fully appreciate the need to manage all four of those collectively. Yeah. Until going through this training. Yeah. Yeah, you can kind of get away with stuff that's short. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I, yeah, I, I didn't sleep good. I didn't good. I, I can still get through this. Well, it's, ten yeah. minute workout. Yeah, it's like I can, I can gut through. Like I was joking just this past week with somebody. You know, I didn't sleep well one night. It's like you know, I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna have just enough sleep to get through the workout, but not enough to feel good about it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. You know, yeah. you and you can do that once in a while, but you can't do that for six days a week for 20 weeks. Right. You've got to find, and you certainly can't do that prepping for an event like this. Right. You have to find. And I think just, again, finding a, finding a mental, um, finding a mentality as to, to reassure yourself that this is the right thing to do. Like, and even for me, it was about once I got to the event and, and got that behind me, it's like, okay, now I got to figure out how to sustain this. And I'm, I'm not going to train like I just trained for, you know, the rest of my life at that level of intensity. But what it's, what it's shown me is, okay, I need to find the balance now, a sustainable balance between sleep, nutrition, hydration and exercise going forward and even within the exercise space what's the right balance of that for longevity yeah and that's something again as i as i listened and experimented with different things you know there there's a balance to be found for and everybody's just probably a little different but there's a balance to be found between zone two cardio strength training muscular endurance yeah. training um to help people sustain life. Yeah. And I think training for this event sort of put that into perspective. Yeah, 100%. I was thinking through like some of the lessons I've learned even in this event and other ones yeah. and like my why for doing some mm -hmm. of this stuff. <clears throat> and I th 
one of the nice things about going through these types of experiences is I think it challenges your identity mm-hmm. and you slowly start to you you slowly start to kind of hold on to that with the looser grip. Because mm-hmm. when you say like I am someone or I, I just never thought I could run. It's like yeah. you kind of self identified as someone who couldn't run more than 100%. three three miles. Right. And when in my twenties <clears throat> and this I'm not, I, I would assume this is the case for a lot of people. You're trying to kind of see how you fit in this world. Mm-hmm. I was very dogmatic in my training approach and like the the um my views on things Mm -hmm. and mainly i that was because i I was protecting my own identity Mm -hmm. and then as that slowly was challenged yeah um and i saw like oh like when that when that's challenged i have to now kind of refine myself every every step along that journey i've become a better person Mm -hmm. and so like I think the why behind it is like I want to be the person <clears throat> who can do it, is open to doing it, and is seeking that not only the physical challenge but the challenge of like who I am as a person. Yeah. Because on the backside of this, I'm going to be a better person for it. So yeah, you have to you have when you're going into something. What what I learned and what you're talking about is. You have to be willing to change. You have to be willing to say, you know, who I thought I was or who I, what I was trying. There's a better, there's a better way. There's a better version to be yeah. created. Um, and a lot of that gets to swallowing ego and asking for help. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that what one thing that, that I really learned during the training is community matters yeah. when you're training because I at, at at concurrent times I wasn't training with my normal group that I train with every day yeah. and so there was a lot of FOMO there a lot of fear of missing like you know yeah. I, I missed that I missed yeah. the camaraderie of that even though I would train in here yeah. I wasn't doing the same things yeah. as them but I would come in here and train like I would just pull an exercise bike up and just watch them work out just so I could have somebody to talk to right. yeah. while I was training yeah. um, at the same time you know through this um, virtual community connecting with people who were going through with the same thing yeah. and just to be able to share experiences to be able to get advice from coaches from Angie here who who plugged in and really helped me change things and talk through things to you know all of that was was having to be vulnerable yeah. to say listen I I don't know how to do this I've got to I, I need help you know yeah. I've got to I've got to change the way I'm doing things I need someone to tell me a better way yeah. And so that was a lot of it of saying, I can't just lock into, well, here's how I'm going to do things. Yeah. Okay, well, that's great. But if you're truly trying to find the better version of yourself, then you need to accept coaching from multiple sources. Yeah. Yeah, they accept that, like, I haven't got it figured out, so I need some help. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, I may not be the genius I think yeah, I am. Yeah, right. <laughs> So, talk to me, well, give me the 10-minute the version mm-hmm. of not necessarily the emotional experience, the impact afterwards, mm-hmm. but, like, what was, what was your experience like? Just kind of lay out, like, what was it like when you showed up, and what was your hikes like? Yeah, so, um, so Stacy and I went out, and kudos to, to her, to my wife Stacy, for buying into this letting me letting me prioritize this event for the 20 plus weeks that it took because (laughs) one thing i realized afterwards is what an incredible time commitment this was right and it was a very self-centered event like when i'm training for this is like this is my priority and so i had to shuffle a lot of things and kudos to the people i work with too for being very understanding and supportive and encouraging of me to do this but Stacy gets all the credits uh, for just letting me do this. You know, 
not questioning all these weird food shipments that are coming to the house or how many pairs of shoes I bought to try to find the right ones. Um, you know, there was a lot going on that she was pretty for understanding and forgiving about. So, um, all, all credit to having a great spouse, but, but you do realize afterwards, like, wow, I, I I spend a lot of time focused on me. I need to, I I need to make up, make up for that now. But, but so we, you know, we went out, what we did is we made, vacation out of it so let's just go the two of us flew up to sun valley um went a few days early because i wanted to acclimate myself not so much worried about the altitude because the interesting thing about the altitude piece that the coaches say is just show up in shape yeah through the training a lot it said mentioned there'd be a lot of questions so there's always a lot of anxiety about well i don't train at altitude how do i get ready for that Show up in shape. Yeah. Well, should I buy one of those training masks? Just show up in shape. Well, what do I do about this? Show up in shape. Yeah. What about the show up in shape? Yeah. That was the answer for everything. And the point of it was you minimize a whole lot of variables if you just show up in shape. So that yeah. was my, my, my mentality is I'm going to show up in shape. But we went out a few days early just to go enjoy it, to yeah. relax it. I wanted to be relaxed going into it. And so we got to sort of see the event unfold in the town. What time did you show, what, what day did you show up on? We went out there on a Sunday, I think. Okay. The, the, the event Sunday. starts, you show up Thursday. Yeah, so, you, okay. you check in on Thursday. Yeah. The event starts Friday morning and then Saturday afternoon. Yeah. So we went out there, I think it was on Sunday, the previous Sunday, and uh, checked in, got a little B&B in the little town of Ketchum, Idaho, right there where we are outside the Sun Valley, and um, spent a few days just chilled out and sort of got to watch the event unfold in the town. Yeah. Met... One day, just out shopping, um, met a guy who worked there on the event staff. This young guy, probably in his mid-20s, could not have been more excited for what he was doing there and just couldn't tell us enough about how awesome this was going to be. They were going to build this great event for us. And, man, you just wait. When you show up, this thing's going to be the best. It's like, yeah. he, right. was, he was fired up <laughs> yeah. for it. Like, okay. And so, um, you know, the first time I went, I, I took a walk one day where we the, we had rented a VRBO condo, and it was about a mile walk to where the event was. And so I took a walk down there one day, and it was my first time to get to look up at the mountain. Yeah. And that was, I'd swallow hard on that one. Like, <laughs> oh, boy, all right, this, this is about to get real. Could, you know? What could you see in your initial ascent? Like, um, like what was visible? Just about the first five or six hundred yards, really, because yeah. I'm sitting there looking at go trying to figure out, man, man, which, which, how do we get up there? Yeah, because yeah. yeah. uh, like they didn't really have it laid out, but you just know I'm going from here up there. Yeah, yeah. Somehow, some way, and it's not that far, so it must be pretty steep. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> so there was a little bit of swallowing hard. So what I did is I said, told myself, relax, you're in shape. So. Took a couple just what I would call strolls through the hills out there yeah. just to get used to walking. Yeah. You know, again, I was just, we were on vacation. Just relax. I would get up early and say, I'm just going to go out for a little hike. So I'd find a little mountain path and go hike around for a couple hours, come home, grab a bite to eat, and we'd spend the rest of the day together. Um, so when I showed up on Thursday, I, you know, I kind of was, was, I was locked in. I was, I was ready to go. I had trained. I had minimized as many variables as I could. I, I wasn't worried mentally. I wasn't – about three weeks prior to this, four weeks prior to this, I was really questioning, am I – in? can I do this? Yeah. Just because you're in that point of training. And so I had to have a couple people tell me, you're ready. You yeah. know, again, had to, you know, ask for a little help. But, you know, talk to a couple people. Like, Dude, if you follow the training plan – you're ready. Because, yeah. you know, I was to the point, my, my knees were starting to hurt, my ankles were starting to hurt, and you know, this and that. It's like, oh, my gosh, you know. But so I showed up. I felt like I was in shape. I was in as good a shape. Now all I needed was for not not for something bad to happen. Yeah. And I felt like I could do it. I didn't have a plan, per se. Um, I got cautioned against going in there with a plan. Yeah. Because much like the Mike Tyson quote, um, everybody's got a plan until they get punched. Yeah. And so. And mentally, if your plan gets thrown off whack, that can be hard to come back from. Yes, yes. So, so the advice I'd gotten from Patrick and from other was, don't 
don't come up with a plan. Patrick told me, he goes, you, I goes, come up with a plan and send it to me, and I will tell you the 15 things that are going to go wrong with it. Like, okay. <laughs> All right. So, so I sort of had a, a, an approach, I will say, I was going to take to this. Um, I knew I had to do 15 ascents. I knew I had 36 hours. You know, they'd give, they gave us all kinds of data on average hike time, but I knew until I hiked it, I wouldn't really know how long it was going to take me to yeah. do it. So, but I showed up, checked in, had lunch on Thursday, um, listened to the speakers. The speakers were great. Um, Jesse Itzler was there and was just basically, you know, his, his approach to this was, hey, guys, there's 8 billion people in this world, right? Only 250 of them get to do this this weekend. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's, this is pretty cool. This is one of these things that when, when you're done with this weekend, no one can take it away from you. Yeah. You know, this investment is going to pay off for the rest of your life because you're going to have this in your bank yeah. for the rest of your life. And then one of the other coaches, um, Chris Hoff, great, great mentality um, coach, he got up there and talked about, and he had talked about this some before, he's like, he's like guys, there's going to come a point in this thing where it's going to get hard. You're going to be, he called it the messy middle. Yeah. Said so you're going to go out the first four hikes. You're going to be running on just adrenaline, excitement, and you're going to just crank through those. He goes, your last hikes, or you're just going to be on, you know, you're going to be locked in, ready to finish. He goes, it's the middle. Yeah, it's that messy middle. He goes, and and he had said the same thing about training. He's like, you know, the first couple of weeks of training, you're excited. The last couple of weeks, you know, it's all downhill. In the middle, that's what, but that's where the magic happens. Yeah. That's where you find yourself is in that dark period of. This is hard. I can't see the end. Yeah. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I just got to keep putting one foot in front of the other. Yeah. So when we started, you know, didn't sleep very much Thursday night. Nobody did. You know, just all this nervous energy. Yeah. You know, you got 250 type A people. Yeah. Right. All with our hiking poles and our, our bibs on. Yeah. And, you know, got our gear bags in the gear tent where we're hiked to go. There is this just excitement and energy and, music's blaring you yeah. know they, they they kick on the m&m you know yeah. lose yourself yeah. is, is starting to crank and yeah. it's like okay it's a, and the first hike out they, that 6 a.m that horn blows the first hike up that mountain was miserable <laughs> <laughs> for a lot of reasons number one you're in a pack of 250 people yeah. all just bursting out of the gate yeah. right and it's like you're just all and so i'm just afraid i'm gonna get stabbed by a by somebody's hiking pole and the way ours started in, in Sun Valley was it started kind of flat and just slowly, the incline slowly grew. And then yeah. all of a sudden you realize, okay, I'm walking uphill. Yeah. And I'm walking uphill a little too fast yeah. because I'm, I'm in this flow. <laughs> and <sighs> I look down, my heart rate's at about 185. Yeah. You know, I've been on the mountain for four minutes and my heart is redlined. I'm trying to talk to the guy next to me because, you know, I'm, uh, you yeah. know, um, and it's like, okay, I just got to get to the first aid station and just, yep. just chill for a yeah. second. Yeah. So, so got there. Our, our, the first section of ours was, was really tough. The middle section was horrendous. Um, it was a section called the wall. And it was basically a black diamond ski run yeah. that you were walking up <laughs> yeah. uh, with loose gravel and dirt yeah. through the whole thing. And the last probably 100 meters of it felt like you were walking at about a 90 degree. It was just it was yeah. awful. Then you got the second aid station. Then you think, okay, now this is now I can just cruise on to the top. Well, not really because it's still an uphill yeah. walk, right? So we finished that first one, got in the gondola, rode down, relaxed. Started the second second height felt much better. Yeah, because now it's like okay, now I'm into my pace. Yeah, I've got my pace. Crowd's thinned out. I'm, you know, there's still people around to talk to. And so my first five went really smooth. And Stacy came, um, and you know, met me at the finish line for one of those, which is really cool. That that energized me. You know, seeing her like okay, getting that. And I told her, like, all I need you to tell to say to me every time you see me is. Keep going. Yeah. All I need to hear is keep going. And so she would, when she would see me, she would just say, keep going. Like we'd talk, chat, and she'd go, keep going. I just needed her to remind me, you're not, don't, don't stop. Yeah. You, you don't finish this thing if you stop. So don't stop. So just keep going. So I rattled through the first five, was feeling good, had stopped for a lunch break, get out on number six, get to the first aid station. The volunteers are out there waving everybody in. They're like, we have a weather delay. Lightning in the area. Uh, 
So we all gathered up, and it and it had gotten cl- gotten cloudy, um, gotten overcast, and it got cold actually. Yeah. Um, but they shut it down for over two hours, like close to two and a half hours. We were shut down. In fact, what they did for those of us who had made it to Aid Station One, they actually had us walk back down, which was just demoralizing it's like i've already walked up this thing i think you told me that but now i'm just yeah. now processing that <laughs> yeah imagine you walk up this first and you're like okay we're here all right i got that piece of it done all right everybody chill out once they realize it's gonna be a while walk back down we gotta uh, get we, and what they did is the people who are at the second aid station they said go ahead and finish and get to the top because you you know, there's a there's a lodge up there. The the deal was they couldn't run the gondolas with yeah. lightning. Right. So that's when they had to shut the course. They couldn't run the gondolas. They had to shut the course down. You're just not like, can I just stay here? Well, yeah. It was kind of like, what would happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just and so so we had to walk back down. So what I ended up doing is I used that time to go in the recovery room, yeah. which they had the great recovery rooms. So again, the event was so well organized with all the food you could need, all the re- the coaches there to make sure to check on you they had a recovery room so when there you know they got 12 sets of norma techs and the chairs in there they got massage therapists so i went there and put a pair of norma tech boots on yeah. for about 20 30 minutes sat down in the chair chilled out relaxed and i knew all right everybody's losing time it's not just me yeah and so it was about two and a half hours though uh i, I kind of got a sense that they were about to let us go so i'd gone back out to the gear tent and they announced hey for those of you who are at aid station one you've got two options Okay, option one, you can just walk back up, which I immediately thought to myself, what's option two? Yeah. (laughs) And I said, now we're going to have some trucks over here that can drive you back up to where you were. Yeah. Okay. But that could take a while. I just grabbed everything I could and just sprinted to where those trucks were at. So I got in the first truck. Um, and so they drove us back. They drove several of us back up to yeah. that starting spot. Like I came here to walk 29, 029 yeah. and not a not, foot more. Not, a, not, not <laughs> one step longer. <laughs> you could drop me right where you picked me up and then don't take me a foot further or a foot shorter. That's I was the awesome. same spot. Yeah. So, so they, so they drove us back up there. And so we started again. And so now I was pretty well rested, which was good. So the next couple went pretty went pretty smoothly. And that was it was during that time when I connected with a couple of guys. Yeah. And this is where um, I think the magic really kicked in. Um, there were two guys there about your age, um, young guys, um, friends growing up. You know, they were there doing this event together. They were business partners, friends, and um, – so we were kind of moving at the same pace. So the three of us started hiking together. And so we, you know, started there and it was got to be about dinner time. And so we, you know, our dinner break. And then in the evening, we started hiking, just the, the three of us hiking together. And that was a game changer. Yeah. Because suddenly now I've got the community I need. I've got guys here. And what we would do is, you know, on the, st- on, on the parts of this, this course are really tough, we would just go marker to marker, you know, and you had somebody there to go, okay, let's just walk 100 meters, stop, take three deep breaths, walk another 100 meters, stop, take three deep breaths, before you know it, we're at the aid station, Yeah, you know, keep going. And then when it got into the night, so then, you know, you get into night hiking. So everybody gets their headlights out, and that's when it is both really it's a really cool experience but it is really daunting yes because now you are truly alone in your head yeah it's you and a dark hill and a spotlight yeah and so um i did the way i approached it was i had a number in my head that i wanted to get to before i rested and so um and one of the guys i was with started having some nausea issues and so um, the other one and I, we, we kept walking. And so we took a couple of longer breaks during the night. We did our 11th hike. We started at about 2.30 in the morning. We started our 11th hike. Yeah. And Austin had gone back to go rest. He, he was, the nausea was more. But Will and I went out and we did hike number 11 between 2.30 and 4 a.m. in the morning. Just the two of us. Um, we saw a deer when we started. Yeah, the deer was very mad that we were interrupting its its nighttime eating. Um, we didn't see a whole lot more. 
Um, yeah. It was just me and him on that mountain, walking up, chatting, talking, keeping each other moving. Yeah. Um, that one was a grit party. It was cold. It was, um, which you wouldn't expect in June, but it was it was chilly, so we had hats and gloves and jackets yep. on. Um, and we gritted that one out and got done, got back down at a little after 4 in the morning. And so he was going to go back to, to his tent and sleep, and we agreed, hey, let's, let's try to start now. But the whole – the whole approach was, man, get as much done Friday as you can. Like yeah. Friday is the work day. Yeah. Put in the work on Friday. Saturday is we just cruise. Yeah. And so I couldn't sleep. I was I was tired, but I was so full of adrenaline and so full of emotion just because yeah. this was this was hard. Yeah. And my body was getting tired. My legs were getting tired. My ankles were getting tired. Yeah. Uh, I was tired of eating. Yeah. Because I was having to eat every lap. I was trying to eat between two and 400 calories yep. to just keep up with the burn. And that gets exhausting. Yes. You know, I'm trying to make sure I'm staying hydrated. Trying to remember when's the last time I took in some electrolytes. And it just, it gets to be a lot. And so I actually went in the recovery room, put on some Normatec boots, laid back in a chair, grabbed a blanket, and just laid there for about two hours. Yeah. That was my that was my night's sleep. Yeah. Um, couldn't really sleep that much. Maybe dozed off 20, 30 minutes. Got up, went out, got changed my clothes, got some breakfast. Will was at breakfast. He said Austin was still still out, but he was going to rally. So um, the two of us, about 7.15, got back out there with four to go. Nice. And so we – then it was just a – breakfast. it was just go do a lap, check. Go do a lap, check. Yeah. You know, uh, Austin was back out now by now, and so he got to where he was about two laps behind us. Yeah. And so we knew that, and we were, you know, and, and so we were like, well, we gotta, we're going to finish, and then we'll, you know, we we, we, we confident he was going to finish, but he's yeah. got he's got to fight his battle, yeah, you know, yeah. and that's the point. You can fight it together, but everybody's got their own battle to fight, and he had his he had a battle he was fighting, yeah. And so I got done with my fourteenth lap, and Stacy was there, so we went back down, um, and going into your last lap, you know they. All during the thing, you got a white bib on with your name, and then they, the last lap, you put a red bib on you. Yeah. And so that sort of signifies last lap. Yeah. And so all day on Saturday, it was really cool being out there seeing those red bibs. Yeah. Because you know that person is – Yeah. That you're person like, finished. They're about to finish. They're about yeah. to finish. And you're cheering those people on, and you're, you're high-fiving them when, they, when you pass them or they pass you, you know, because you're excited for them. And yeah, that's yeah. where – he said, it's not a race. It's like you all want to finish this together. Right. You know, so you're cheering for those guys. And so so I had my red bib now. And actually, Colleen told us, like, there's weather coming, so get on the mountain now. Yeah. So I we barely had time to even <laughs> stop and relish. It's like we grabbed our red bibs. I changed my clothes real quick, um, got my red bib on, kissed my wife. I'm like, all right, I'll see you at the top. Yeah. And we got I'm going. Off. Yeah. I'm off. So Will and I, we took off. But that last lap was a really cool experience. That yeah. last lap was – Again, now you're the one getting high fived, yeah. getting celebrated. In fact, so there was a lady at our event. Uh, she she became kind of the sto- one of the one yeah. of the st- one of the heroes of our event. Um, she's a little little uh, elderly Chinese lady. It was probably I think close to seventy years old. Might have been seventy. She was out there doing this thing, yeah. right? And so I'm on this again, this toughest part of the, of the ascent. I'm out there. And I had stopped and was equal resting and just kind of looking around, yeah. soaking in. Because it's middle of the afternoon, so yeah. I'm soaking around, appreciate Because this is my last lap, because I know I ain't climbing this thing again, yeah. right? Yeah. And this is a lady, she comes by me, and she's got a coach with her, helping her along. And she gets about two feet from me. And she just turns, and she's about four foot two. I don't know, she's, <laughs> <laughs> she was under five feet tall, yeah. probably. And she just looks at me. And she kind of she kind of half smiles and looks up at me. She goes, "Why are you just standing there? You can't quit now." <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And I just kind of smile back. Like, no, don't you worry. I'm gonna finish this yeah, thing. Yeah. She goes, oh, you get going. <laughs> <laughs> did she but finish? She did. Man, that's awesome. She did. So, so yeah. So, um, so I finished mine, and I am equal parts exhausted and elated. Yeah. And and Stacy's up there. I get the hug, and she gives me the. I knew you could do this the whole time, and which, you know, just reassuring to hear from yeah. my wife that I never had a doubt. High five, my buddy, and 
you know, we're deciding, okay, let's, let's go get cleaned up and find out where Will, where Austin is and, and, and all this. And then you start looking around. And again, for me, it was about three in the afternoon. And with the weather delay, they would only give us back up to an hour. Right? We lost over two hours, like two hours, 15 minutes, something like that. So they said, hey, you can get till seven? You can get till seven. Uh, okay. All they could extend it, like no matter how much time you lost, they would match it minute for minute up to an hour. Yeah, that's yeah. all they would give you. Yeah. So, so everybody had till seven, and that's when you start seeing these people that you're like, man, this person. If you saw them on the street, you'd think there's no way that person would ever yeah. do this. Yeah, and there they were, climbing with that red vest, yeah. getting that red vest. Like this little lady, almost seventy years old, when she started training for this thing twenty weeks prior, she said she couldn't even pick up a two pound dumbbell yeah she didn't even know what a kettlebell was and she yeah. finished and i i just want to pause for a moment yeah. and um and highlight how impressive that is oh my because gosh. this was the hardest thing i've ever done yes 100 percent. i'm really fit yes you drained for it like when I, you see someone on that mountain Who's seventy? Yeah, twice my age. Yeah, who just who started working out twenty weeks ago? Yes, he was like, "Oh my gosh, you did that!" It's so the, it, it's almost mind boggling impressive. It, the, it it challenged it challenged me like <clears throat> like it scrambled me mentally watching because I was like, "Man, I don't." I was going like, "Man, am I mentally tough?" Because I don't know. Because like, the the, I don't know if I could do that. Fortitude it took. For those people who who took hardly any break and hiked for thirty six hours yeah. is impressive. So there was a guy at our event who, like a fitness influencer, yeah, s- nice guy, yeah. very very pleasant. This guy flew up the mountain, yeah, right. This guy just he was done by midnight that uh, two in the morning. Something yeah. like that. I mean, the guy, you know, this guy's got like a million five million followers on Instagram yeah. for his fitness. You know. His, it, it, Super fit guy. He was not the star of the show. Right. It's, and that's not how it is. It's no. like, it is the people who, because you, I will say this, and, and I would think you might agree. It's like, I, I completed it. I had, I had stuff left in the tank. Mm. I mean, like I, I could have kept going. Yeah. So I, and I gave myself space. Yeah. I could, I could, like we could take us. I could sleep. Yeah. I, could, and that I was, could go in the recovery room. That was my whole my whole approach was I knew physically I could do by the time I got there, I knew as long as I didn't get in trouble, nutrition, hydration, yeah. or just medically. Yeah. I okay, I can do this. Yeah. You know, I've trained for this. I'm ready for the hard part of it. I finished the last lap. My feet were killing me. My yeah. Achilles were killing me. The last two laps, I would turn and walk backwards yeah. if I could just to try to take some of the pressure off my yeah. Achilles. They were hurting so bad. So could I have done one more? Yeah, if I had to, I could have. But, yeah. man, it was – It would have sucked. It would have sucked. No, I mean, it's like you like yeah. – It's like I could just go through. It's like I was physically exhausted. Yeah. But like, I just don't think I gave equal to what they gave. No, no. What they gave was – the definition of giving 110 yeah, percent they yeah. gave more than they actually had yeah it like i said like there was i had gap i had room yeah. to play they yeah. had no room they to had play, no so margin 100 percent. there was another guy that was out there on our mountain and i had seen this guy a few times and you know spoken to him a few times and you're out there and you're, and you're trying your best to communicate with people because again you're in a you're all in a dog fight. I mean, you're all in yeah. in a physically tough situation. So you're and you're not competing against them. You're competing with them. So yeah. you want them to everyone's do well. everyone's going on the mountains for everyone to, to uh, succeed. Yes, Every, you want to see everyone find their definition of success. Yeah. And for there were people out there, their definition of success was not. 29,029 feet. That was five laps. Their, def- their definition of success was five laps. Yeah. And that first lap may have taken them four hours. Oh, yeah. Like, I think there was late. Like, I really, I, and some of this is a little bit blurry, but I mean, I think it was about like dinner time. Mm-hmm. Someone was like, so and so has done their first lap. 
Yeah. You're like, damn. And it took all they had. Yeah. Well, this is the lady. She was she was probably 70 and never yeah. hiked, hiked before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and you think about that. It's like, man, that's impressive that this woman wouldn't quit. Yeah. But there was a guy out there on our mountain. He was probably about my age, you know, early 50s. And he was struggling. He was a he was a bigger guy. He probably weighed fifty pounds more than me. And there was a time when uh, he had paw he was at a pause, and um, I and it was at a part a spot where me and my buddies were going to stop. And so we paused, and he looked at me, and he was just leaning on his poles, and he looked at me, and I'll I'll clean it up for your podcast. But he just looked at me, and he said, "This is effing hard." Yeah. <laughs> and then he kind of paused like two seconds. He goes, this is really effing hard. <laughs> and I said, he said, the first one was my emotion. The second one there was just for effect. <laughs> I'm like, well, brother, I believed both of them. Yeah. Right? You, and, um, I feel you. And, and so we're chatting. And this was, I was on about lap. This was Saturday morning. And I'm like, you know, late morning. And I was like, man, where you at? And, and you know, on the back of everybody's vest, you know, as, as you reach certain levels of ascent, they put check marks on your back, right? Yeah. It, it matched to the seven highest summits, you know, the highest summit of each continent. Yeah. So, um, and so I was kind of looking at his back. I'm like, okay, he's got a lot of red check marks. Yeah. And I was like, what lap you on? And he's, at the time he said 11. Yeah. And I'm doing, okay, I'm on 13. And I'm sort of doing the math. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, this guy's got a shot. Yeah, you can do Like, he's, he's, he's in the game. Yeah. And sure enough, um, you know, when I finished, so Will and I went back down we saw Austin, and he was about to start his last lap. We, we saw him, and, and so we went back up. We were watching different people finish, and yeah. it's just so emotional watching people come across the yeah. line, their families, they're greeting them, their friends, they're just breaking down. So we saw Austin, and, and we knew he had fought. Yeah. He, this, the, the nausea had just really done a number on him. Yeah. And he's like, I don't know if it's something I ate or I didn't eat enough or what it was. But he he struggled. Yeah. But he made it. Yeah. And he would not quit. And he and he made it. And so we went up and celebrated with him. And then we went down. Um, and then we you know were watching people come down with their red hat. And sure enough, this guy That's comes awesome. down with a red hat on. Yeah. It's like, brother, you did yeah. it. And and turns out when we were talking to him, his mother had passed away mm. probably a year previously. Man. This event. And he had been battling depression. Yeah through it all and he was a basketball coach and so he had committed to his basketball team i'm gonna do this yeah the um i want to i want to try to explain to people like some of the little details of the event make the biggest difference you wear the bib with your name on the front and back Mm -hmm. so everyone calls you by name and everyone and so the entire mountain is people saying, you've got this. Yeah. You're doing good. The volunteers were absolutely yes. mind-blowing. At each aid station, there's volunteers ringing cowbells, just like encouraging you yeah. along the way. And they are, I mean, I've been to like, you've done like 5K races. Mm-hmm. There's someone, there's a volunteer handing you a thing of water. Mm-hmm. And they may be like, you're doing a good job. Yeah. That, th- these volunteers are 100%. They are... They are they are as invested in your success, no doubt, as you are. No and doubt. so, like, and it, there's a you know, your thirteenth lap, or for ours, your so your red yeah. bib lap. There's a bit of like sadness, and you're like, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna see you again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I saw, or I saw this person from laps one through ten, or yeah. you know, or, and I saw this. You were my nighttime person. Yeah. It's just like there's a um, yeah, there's a bit of like. Uh, sadness when like man like you were part of like the reason i'm on this lap yeah uh and so like there's like you're like doing your your 13th lap like giving volunteers like hugs oh that 100 <laughs> you know I mean? they were so great the volunteers at uh our first aid station they were having like some sort of food network challenge yeah. thing going on they were taking the snacks and they were like mixing and matching and decorating they were yeah. taking like these little rip van waffles and bananas and peanut butter and like honey and every time you come up it'd be like the presentation were it was different or something yeah, yeah. like we're making sandwiches out of them now and it got to be a big game with them but yeah. but yeah they just that and so my last lap up it was like this is the last time i get to eat one of these yeah. with you guys you yeah, yeah yeah uh yeah the, the volunteers just and like i said everything is so personalized 
guys there. Everything. It just, it just, you just feel like you know everybody. And I'll let you talk about Colleen at, at the bottom, yeah. who is the absolute soul yeah. of this event. Even my mm-hmm. wife said, how does she keep going? Yeah. Like, how does she do this? <laughs> yeah, so, um, Colleen's uh, the MC, And yeah. uh, the way she will say it is she's just there to narrate your stories. Mm-hmm. But she's there at the start through the night. She goes to sleep at some point in the night yeah. and wakes up the next day. But she narrates people's stories through the entirety of the event. And so it's um, there's this there's this person at the bottom of the hill that when you get off the gondola um, is there uh, to congratulate you. She's also there to, to, to um, ensure you know what's going on and what you need to do. She's there to tell you, hey, lunch is, is going yeah. on, but you only got another 45 minutes. So if you haven't eaten, it's time to go eat or it's time yeah. to go do this. And she's, she's, um, or have you put your sunscreen on yeah. or, Hey, do you, you know, do you have your jacket? It's going to yeah. get cold or that, you know, it's, it's looking like rain. So it's yeah, like, she's like the mom of the mountain. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's, it's down there at the bottom. So this is another, just, um, like detail is after each lap, there's a big board of wood that has your name on it. And then however many blocks equals your Everest. Yeah. And so you take a brand and you burn your brand yeah. into your box. Yeah. And so like, that's your experience at the bottom with Colleen yeah. helping make sure you do a good brand yeah. or making fun of you if you didn't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> she, over a microphone. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. like if you mess up, she's going to announce to everybody that you messed it up. So. Yeah. And so you just build this. I mean, just the connection you have. And I think that's part of the beauty of it being um, a, um, a cyclical event versus just like an in and an yeah. out. It's, yeah. You see this, you just, this is like your little piece of joy. Yeah. You know, that you get to the bottom of the mountain and there's somewhere that there who's knows you, cares mm-hmm. about you, yeah. who's celebrating you. Yeah. She is invested in everybody's yeah. journey. Yeah. And, 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 you know, hear the events over and like she still communicates with us. Yeah. Just checking in yeah. on you, seeing how you're doing. Yeah. Like she, she wants to know who you are, what mm-hmm. your backstory is. And, and, um, you know, she's, she also then on, uh, Saturday goes up to the top of the mountain yeah. and then is there cheering you on as you're coming yeah. through for your, yeah. for your red bib. Yeah. So like the, these tiny details of, of the, the volunteers or having your bib or like having the fact that you're checking off boxes. Cause then people know how many you've done and yeah. they're like, congratulations on Kilimanjaro or yeah. you're, you're that six. You're doing awesome. Yeah. Um, the red bibs, when someone sees you in your red bib, it, your, your 13th lap <clears throat> is this still insanely difficult because you're usually at your max yeah. and that you've, that's the most yeah. you've done. So you're at your most tired yeah. and it's just this triumphal kind of mm-hmm. march yeah. to the finish line that brings with it like in, incredible joy and a sense of completion and accomplishment. And then also a sense of relief that it's done, but a sense of uh, sadness because it's yeah. like, man, like, my journey is now at its end. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. um, and it, it's just like all these just emotions all kind of wrapped in it at, at once. And it's, it's created by the physical challenge itself, but then the, the efforts and details that go into the experience. Yeah. Because I, you know, like you could just go, Pick a mountain and do it, but yeah. <laughs> it would right. not be the same. Experience. It wouldn't be the same experience. Again, yeah. there's a the, the communal aspect of it is so important. Yeah. Um, it just it it makes it joyous. It it makes. I mean, the weekend after you finished, I actually texted two, two guys and like swap messages. I was like, "Hey guys, just check it in. You know, my buddy here yeah. in Memphis just finished this yeah. and and." Hey, he came back and confirmed that it was the hardest thing he'd ever did. Yeah. So the fact that we thought that <laughs> yeah. feels like we we're validated. Yeah, like you, you, um, yeah, you build these connections on the mountain that are just uh, they're just different than mm-hmm. than what you get in yeah. daily life. It's yeah. just something about doing that physical challenge at your lowest point, most vulnerable, yeah. but not being alone. Yeah. There's someone there 
to eat, to walk with you, whether that's to have a conversation with you or to just walk in silence. Yeah. It's just to sit there and feel like I'm not by myself. There's people here who care about me. There's people here invested in this yeah. while you're at your lowest moment yeah. and maybe doubting yourself or, um, or just being physically strained uh, to the point where you, you you don't you don't have clarity of thought. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's there's a time where where you're just physically exhausted, yeah. and it's not like you're sitting there going like, I don't know if I can do this. You're just you don't even know what to think. You Your brain's think. broken. You, yeah, you just you you just you want to just stop. Your brain, and, yeah, your brain's broken. and You're just kind of lost. You're just yeah. like I'm just kind of a zombie in this I, I just I just know I have to keep putting one foot in front yeah. of the other I don't know why I'm doing it I don't know I, you know yeah. if, if it weren't for the lights on this path or the you know where the the guy walking in front of me I don't know that I would even know where I'm going right now yeah. I just know that I got to get up there yeah uh, yeah you just turn into a zombie and having people there to share that experience yeah. is and I think also there's something to having people who you never interact with yeah it's just, it just just this event brought people together yeah and you know i would never have met these two businessmen young yeah. businessmen from baltimore maryland yeah. um but we just you know it's like hey now that's the guys i hiked with i look back at the picture of my phone like, yeah that, that's the guys i yeah. hiked with you know it's yeah. like you have uh, a great memory of like your time together yeah 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 um it, it, it it's it's just it, it's an it's a unique event and has a it has an impact on you different than any other event possible yep i mean i've done a lot of i've done a lot of events yeah. i've done a lot of competitions and that one is 100 yeah. percent number one yeah. <laughs> from so let, its impact and all yeah. kinds of different things so let, so let me ask you a yeah. question okay as a fitness professional a fitness business owner yeah how do you think about how has this event or have you been able to process yet how this changes your view of what you do do and how you approach business especially your business yeah um i haven't had a whole lot of time to think specifically about that but what a couple things i that i have processed and thought through is the fact that it just it be that people found it accessible is interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know if that's you just unique to that event. I mean, it's just the fact that like we deal with people who go like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, mm -hmm. I don't have time. I don't you know. Yeah. It's they fitness is not part of their lives. They're not really seeking it and they don't see a path forward through it and yet here i am and so i think there was a bit of a look uh you can get some real passion fatigue when like you're really trying to help people mm -hmm. you've got like a uh, you've got like honestly the thing that could save their lives and they don't want anything to do with it <clears throat> that can get frustrating so there was a bit of like wait, 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 what is happening here this like yeah. this person who's never exercised before did the hardest thing i've ever done yeah I said that scrambled my brain. Yeah, I was having. I I still have a hard time kind of processing through. Like, what? Yeah. I, 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 how does that happen? Yeah. Um, I think the necessity for. I mean, I've always kind of realized this, but. And and wanted and, and that, I mean that's part of what we do here, but the necessity of physical challenge when it comes to community, and the necessity of community when it comes to physical challenge. That's great. There that's great. are unique people who can exist and just do it by themselves, but mm -hmm. it's that's not the, the norm. Yeah. I think people, um, I see a world where people do not have connection. They live their lives beside other people and not with them. And um, there's very service level relationships and conversations and, um, and quite honestly, like I've, it's, I've always kind of like not enjoyed that. But I, when I came back from this, I had like a visceral response. I was like, I cannot do the college church and the football talk and talk about like smoked meats. I was like, I just couldn't do it. It, it, yeah. 
I had a visceral negative response to it because I think I experienced something that was so the opposite what I've yeah. always wanted in in, in, in software. So um, from a business perspective, as a gym owner, it just like re it solidified like the necessity yeah. of that. Um, yeah, I, what what I can see from from that lens is again the thing that I took away is you're not just a gym owner, yeah, but you are providing coaching and guidance on how to live a healthy, fit lifestyle. Yeah. And again, what I took away from this deal was a healthy, fit lifestyle is more than just lifting weights. Yeah. There are other elements that that people need to understand and yeah. understanding that balance. And the more you can open people's eyes to there's no there's no magic pill. Yeah. Okay. But the harder you the harder the situations you put yourself through, the more you're gonna be able to endure. The easier life gets, yeah. the more you push yourself to do hard stuff. Yeah. Then the everyday stuff, like, okay, look, I, I'm I'm not I'm not suffering through right. this. Okay. I don't have to suffer through this. I know what suffering is like, and this isn't I'm not doing this. <laughs> yeah, I would say it for sure solidified the necessity for physical challenge um, to build resilience and have a yeah. good life. I've always kind of made the statement, like, you are not your full self if you are not physically challenging yourself. Well, and, and again, I, I think one of the reasons, and I had said this to you before, I think one of the reasons why you were able to get through it, even though you didn't specifically train the way you did, is you do a lot of things to build mental toughness and resilience. Yeah. Um, I needed to step my game up. Yeah. And so that training... That, me going specifically headlong into the training the way I did is how I got there. I think you had a much bigger base in that already. Yeah. And so that helped you um, when it got tough to know, okay, I'm again, I'm fit. I'm, I, I've, I've sat in, I've sat in cold water. I've yeah. sat in, in saunas. You know, you do yeah. that enough, you build, you build some resilience. And I think that's what this event gave, gave me the opportunity to see, the importance of building that resilience. Yeah, yeah uh, I would say this is a is a as a business owner, I have to do business, yeah. and I think I've been sucked into business lately because of the necessity. I was kind of yeah. just been the the sled dog mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> here the last six months. I was kind of yeah. like <laughs> head down and go, yeah. pull this thing and just get yeah. it over the finish line, yeah. right? Um, but it was like it, it was a good reminder of why they're going back to the mission and say, yeah, you know, this is more than like operations and KPIs and all this stuff. This is, this is people's livelihoods. This mm -hmm. is their, this is their eternal livelihoods. Yeah. And like, it's, it's, um, that's what kind of has to be at the forefront. Mm -hmm. And I think it goes back to, you know, kill the lies. I mean, it's not about like losing 10 pounds. That's, that's great. Yeah. It's just like, in 20 years, you're going to be the person, you're either going to be the better version of yourself or you're going to be the mm -hmm. same. Yeah. And I think it's important for you to know what's going to, that I'm not okay with you being the same and yeah. you shouldn't be either. And I want to right. be the person that helps you become the best version of yourself right. yeah. that you deserve to be and other people deserve out of you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, yeah, like I said, uh, it was, so, you know, my story is exactly the same as yours, just different, different, yeah. <laughs> different numbers different, <laughs> different hill different number of yeah. ascents yeah. you it's know just, different city yeah. Uh, yeah the uh i think what's two things that stick out in my head is like it is something about like when you get to the bottom you look up you're like wow yeah. <laughs> there was a there was a point in our course again where that that again the the first part was tough. The third part was tough. The middle part was really tough. Yeah. And yeah, there was a point in the track where you would just, we would turn this bend and you would just see the gravel yeah, yeah, of yeah. this, this one part of the thing. And it was just, it was almost just demoralizing yeah. to look at it. <laughs> and then you just, all right, here we go. Yeah, yeah. And again, that's the difference between this and, and a lot of other endurance events is, this took me 19 and a half hours of walking time. Yeah. Like I added up the time that I was actually on the mountain. I went back and 
pulled the data off yeah. my watch because I, I clocked every ascent. Yeah. The t- my total walking time was 19 and a half hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this was not a this was not a two hour, you know, hike up a trail, yeah. go snap a few pictures at the top, and come back and have lunch. I mean, this was. In in what turned out to be about thirty two or thirty three hours, nineteen and a half of those hours were me walking up a hill. Yeah, yeah. The it's hard to explain it to people, and it's just like, man, like, how did I put the right words into place of like how hard this thing was? And it's like it okay, it was a black diamond ski run. Yeah, for three miles. <laughs> exactly. 13 times you were going the wrong way (laughs) 13 times and there's just an aspect of like there's an aspect of like there is no unknown after two ascents right you're just like oh you you just like say a lot of bad words when you get to that that spot and like and like every spot's that spot there's not an easy part there's not a flat part there's not a downhill spot it's just uphill at varying degrees and varying angles and it's but every freaking foot of it sucks yeah there was there was a there was about a 25 meter stretch when you when we when we finished the wall there's eight station two for about 25 meters like oh okay this is much easier yeah it was on a service road then yeah. all of a sudden the service road just went up yeah like, yeah oh god come it's on just up 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 man it's like i don't it's just up it's, it's up just, the whole time every part of it up. sucks it's hard and so yeah. like there's the mental resiliency that you build is just like there's there's no relief here. No, no. <laughs> just, you're gonna ride that gondola down. You're gonna you're gonna turn. And, and this is where again you have a decision to make. Yeah. And this is the thing I remember hearing going into this. Okay, is you get off that gondola. You got at the bottom. You got a decision to make. You turn one way. You can go back into that nice comfy lodge yeah. and get some food, sit in a comfy chair, or you can go this way. Yeah. And you go right back up the mountain. That's. I said, I call those coffins. I was like, those are those are places to die. It's yeah. the comfy chairs. It's the recovery room yeah. for too long. Yeah. It's the it's the the chair at the yeah. at the aid station. There's just yeah. there's a lot of opportunities for you to go and just give up. Yeah. And yeah. so the 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 difficulty is not just the physical challenge, yeah. but the mental necessity to resist that comfort yeah. and just lean into the lean next into it. lean into the next difficult piece. Yeah. There's something unique about the night hikes. The night hikes were a grit party. It's and it's yes. a combo factor of like you've been on the mountain all day. So you're mm-hmm. you're physically exhausted. Yeah. But the 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 vibe of the mountain goes down. Yeah. There's I mean there's still the energy drops. There's yeah. still people in the, yeah. uh, on the mountain. There's yeah. still uh, volunteers, but that kind of goes away, and you really kind of like suck into your own yeah. your own existence. There's you only like my set was like it was like you're you only exist in the three feet in front of you yeah. that's lit by your headlamp, and yeah. that's just where you exist for eternity because there's no reference point for like. Right. I can't look up and see the mountain. I can yeah. only see three feet in front of me. All you can see, all, all we could see were the lights on the trail. Uh, yeah. You couldn't see the trail. You could just see the lights on the trail. And there were at certain points. So, yeah, the, the night hikes were were equal parts. I'm just stabbing yeah. these poles in the ground. And my, my field of vision is the three feet in front of me that my headlight will illuminate. Yeah. And... But there were points when I could turn around and I could see the little town of Ketchum, Idaho, <laughs> all lit up. I'm like, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And so that's where you you had to, your perspective had to go from, and again, to me, that was a little bit of the savior, was your perspective goes from, here's here's the fight I'm in. The fight I'm in is three feet in front of me. Yeah. This is, i got to find the right spot to put my foot every time, and I've got to lock in. Yeah. But every once in a while, i got to raise up and, remember my perspective and yeah. see wow this is pretty cool yeah yeah it's um a very impactful event yeah. like yeah. um and we could talk about it we for could, probably we another could two talk hours for another two hours <laughs> <laughs> but let's um uh, we said the question we we're going to ask to yeah. each other was would you do it again uh for me yes i would i would do it again um 
I would do a different mountain. I yep. would not go back to the same to the same mountain. I would like to do it again because now I would like to go back with the perspective that I referenced Patrick earlier. Patrick's sole goal this year in doing this, and he'd already finished like three other. Uh, he'd done done this thing already three times in the past. Yeah, three or four, maybe more than that. His goal is to do every one this year, um, and he's doing it through an injury. But his his sole purpose for showing up is to be there to support others. Yeah. And going back now, the first one was for me. I would love to be able to go back and with a different perspective now of focusing outwardly. Yeah. And to make sure that those people that are struggling to get up the hill, that I'm I'm there to talk them up it. Yeah. I just I just think I would like to go back and experience it from that angle now. Yeah. Yeah. So how about you? Yeah. I um you know, we talked about this, but physically, mentally, it was nothing new to me. Not to say that. Physically, mentally, I was prepared. Yeah. Emotionally, it scrambled me pretty good. Yeah. So the 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 week after for me was like a really weird spot. Yeah. Um, and so I I recognized that that was a unique experience. <clears throat> that was the first hit of the drug, and mm-hmm. I'm probably never gonna get that again. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of processing through. It's like, I'm not, I'm not seeking that again. Mm-hmm. I would, I w- definitely want to do it again. Mm-hmm. I want to immerse myself back into that community and that experience because I think it's just, is an energizing, it's just very, amazing experience. Yeah. Do I want to do the same mountain again? Nope. I'm, I would like to go experience a different one. Part of that's because I went up it 13 times. Yeah. <laughs> but part of it's because I, it's like, uh, I, there's a lot of confidence. Yeah. I just, I know I can do that one. Let right. me go do one that's new. Let yeah. me, ex- that's how I want to experience, yeah. you know, get that same kind of fe- yeah. feeling. Yeah. Um, I also really like to go back and I think it'd be fun to go back to Snow Basin, take my family, go yeah. on a vacation yeah. and volunteer on one day. Yeah. That, that would be a yeah. cool, fun experience. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, that would be neat to be out there. And those volunteers, we mentioned earlier, these people pay their own way to get there. Yeah. Like, they pay their own room and board. We said they get, like... Yeah, like, I, I think it's worth saying, like, a lot of the volunteers are people who have done it before. Yeah. Um, at, they travel pay their own travel, pay their own room and board to go there and be part of that experience and like cheer you on. So yeah. that's, that's, that's probably the strongest testimony. <laughs> yeah. If that doesn't tell you how this community uh, functions together, that, and yeah, it, it's, it's an amazing group. And the, the organizers, the, the owners are invested in this thing as an experience. Yep. It's not just, I mean, it's a business for them, but it's about the experience they're building. Yeah. And that, and they've done an amazing job of building and experience and having people there that this isn't their job. It's their passion. Yeah. 100%. 100%. So to conclude, I think both Barry and I would both tell you, you should, you should look into it. It's, it's, I highly recommend it. Um, it's, it's a game changer. Um, it's changed how I think about my life, my fitness, my relationships. It's changed how, uh, I view competitiveness um, it, it's, it, it's really made me challenge the way I think about a lot of things. Yeah. And even if it's not accessible to you, like find, find your own Everest. Yeah. Find, find something hard to do that you might, e- even if it scares you that you can't finish it, that's okay. It's yeah. not about the finish. It's about the journey. Yeah. hundred percent. All right. All right, bud. Hey, great talking to you. Thanks buddy. All right. NBS fitness radio out. Thank you for listening to NBS fitness radio. If you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to share it with your friends, follow us on social media, and check out our website at www.nbsfitness.net. Hit the subscribe button and tune in next time for more NBS Fitness Radio.